pretty much through those three cycles. Then they lose twice in a row to BMG as BMG takes the fourth cycle. And now here they are on the following cycle, and sure enough, they're uh, they're going to a third game once again against the likes against the likes of uh, of Nullstone Gaming here. So very very interesting indeed. And uh, you know the the, cra the craziest thing about that not only the, the base race in itself always a lot of fun, but uh, the fact that where am I going with this? Oh yeah, uh, the team stats. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Uh, Sync Esports was oh, was ahead on team stats the whole game, even at the very end. Yeah. They were always ahead, even upwards of twenty thousand golden experience. So really, I mean, we got to look at that. It's one of the biggest comebacks we've ever had. I mean, <laughs> a long time at least, if not ever. So very impressive stuff from Nullstone Gaming. Sure, mistakes were happened, but uh, like I said before, hey, you, you can't just just look at that. You got to look at the good play from Nullstone. Yeah, and the draft, man. Like we, we saw it in the last series. I think the last series had maybe a bit more of an impact. But in the later stage of the game, like Zinc, they just didn't have the heroes to really cut through, you know, the tanky presence of Nelson Gaming. And I mean, if Zinc can't careful, Nelson Gaming could easily, you know, draft a, a similar lineup as well. Like Gemini can easily be as tanky as Uki, you know, because of his, his passive and and the way you kind of build him. So I mean, if they pick up maybe like Keep of the Forest, perhaps, or any kind of other sort of tanky heroes, Zinc they have Dr. Repulsor and Tempest as well as Magmus, the, the heroes that. You know, they didn't offer too much in, in, in the sort of the last game of the last series as well. So, And they are right-clicking the Berserker break. So if Zink aren't careful, I mean, they could definitely get done by the uh, the tanky lineup of North Sun Gaming, man. They're, they're starting a revolution. They I, are. I, I'm definitely agreeing with this revolution of tanky heroes, get man. Get some Soul Reaper, get some Accursed thrown in there, yeah. you know. Meta shift, extra man. Extra heal happen. tank, yeah. yeah. Make it happen. Yeah, so sure enough, we'll see how that uh, possibly... Possibly it turns out here, you know, you look at the initial bands, yeah, through the Fall Parasite, Swift Blade and Oogie coming out, so but it's safe like, to say. It's such a good way of playing, though, in that respect, because, like, if you can pick heroes that can out-sustain the enemy team, like, you know, Tempest and Magmus, like, they have all these great sort of, uh, you know, ultimate cooldowns are off their down like, they don't offer too much outside of you know maybe a couple of auto attacks but if you're picking like Dr. Repulsor he's not going to offer too much as say like a, an other hard carry so if you can you know brunt the, the bursty, uh, bursty sort of lineup of, of Zinc or make them use their ultimates then you know you can easily out sustain them and, and win from there so know some gaming come on I'm rooting for the, the hard tanks again man <laughs> are you being a biased caster now I just I'd like to see a, a meta game shift, man. <laughs> because like throughout like the last couple of cycles, we've seen a lot of team fight potential. Obviously, Magmus and, and Tempest and all these you know big ultimates in, in that respect. But it, there has to be a time where you have to exploit you know the large um, ultimate cooldown sort of times and mm -hmm. and outside of just you know playing around the ultimates. Like and then in this case, I, I think it can work and it'd be interesting to sort of see. We've seen two games that has worked right now, and I mean, we might even see a game three as well, if uh, if Nelson follow that kind of trend. Unless Sync pick up maybe a hard carry, um, which they could definitely do, because well, they've got two picks left as well. You know, it was kind of interesting to see the bands here too. You know, Legionnaire banned out by Sync even, on top of Warby, so really addressing the, uh, the, the what you got here, and his potential. Yeah. So. I feel it's still on the board, but again, oh, wow. though. Okay, so they're actually going to leave um, a jungler completely. But look, again, though, like this kind of all in sort of ultimate sort of style that Zinc are going for, they can easily get countered if they're not careful with sort of a tanky lineup. And Drama and Pyromancer doesn't even matter, but if you get three tanky cores, like if you can survive maybe, you know, 15, 20 seconds of the team fight, you're eventually going to, you know, end up winning it. Because what does Tempest offer? Like, what does Magmus, Tempest, and Engineer offer outside of the ultimates? Really not too much. Um, and so if, you know, Nelson Gaming can really combat that. Yeah, again, another tanky hero, man. So if, if let Zinc can't care for when this goes late enough, they could definitely be in a situ similar situation in game two. A lot, not, not only somewhat of a tanky hero and Drunken Master, but also a very, very physical threatening team here on the Legion side. Uh, Andromeda, you know, the ideal support, of course, for uh, amplifying that physical damage with the Aurora. Uh, not, not, also not what we see too often. Only four games. I'm actually really surprised at that. It's just a complete counter to Tempest, honestly. Like they need to have some kind of Tempest counter because, like, like I said before, they have the late game. I think because obviously, you know, Zinc, uh, sorry, Tempest Engineer and Magus don't offer too much in terms of the late game. Well, obviously, Tempest does, but um, outside of you know the ultimates, but you know, if Zinc, Zinc can easily overthrow or you know overrun Nelson Gaming in sort of the mid game style, so they need some way of sort of dealing with Tempest, for example. And there's the pebble. So yeah, I mean, think of like 
in terms of the 50, 60 minute mark, like these heroes don't offer barely anything compared to sort of what Noah Stone are, are offering. But on the flip side, in terms of the mid game, they are incredibly dangerous. Yeah, and Noah Stone Gaming, like, can, can Noah Stone Gaming really sort of contend in sort of team fights that are around 15 minutes? He just can't, honestly. So, in that respect, um, it's going to be, you know, who can really uh, play their, sort of their style better? Uh, and it's going to make for an interesting game break. Yeah. It is. It is. Uh, and I love seeing Andromeda. It's definitely been one of my more favorite supporters to watch just in general because of not only the swap is a you know, fun spectating kind of thing to watch, but uh, the, the buffs that she did get, uh, speaking of the swap, it, how she gets that big armor buff now, kind of like Malakin's, how Malakin's ultimate works initially, that tapers off over time. So kind of takes away a little bit being the sacrificial lamb all the time. I mean, usually still is in the end, but... Helps give her a better chance to ultimately survive, and yeah, big news there. But yeah, exactly. I mean, so really, it's a case for Sync Esports. Uh, you can guarantee they they got they got the last game in their minds in a sense of uh, you, yeah. we made some mistakes. Let's not do it again. Let's just take that early game bit lead that we had like last game, and this time, get, you know, go cutthroat with it. Just yeah, really finish it exactly. in before it gets to the late game stage where Nullstone can take over. So that's gonna be the yeah. question mark here. What are we gonna see for lane, though? By the way. I think it's going to be a Paramount's crack in mid and Gemini and Drummond are bottom with uh, Suicide Drunken Master and then Engineer Pebbles mid, su uh, Solo Drops Repulsor, Suicide Magnus and obviously Tempest in his own jungle. So um, for Nelson Gaming here they want to just try and slow the game down as much as possible because once they get a couple of kills they're going to make that snowball happen like we saw in game one. You know, Once they have that early momentum they're just going to keep on, keep on, keep on at Nelson. If Nelson can try and delay it as much as possible then obviously like we said before they have the late game because of the sort of the tanky presence that they offer but um, the only problem is, is is can they get to the late game. Um, and the, the biggest thing is that is honestly trying to win the early game because if Zinc have a bad sort of a, you know, on, on the wrong foot in terms of start, starting the game, then they're going to slow down their core items. They're going to slow down the portal key on pebbles. They're going to slow down the astrolabe on tempest. If they slow these items down, then they can't really make that snowball happen. And if they do, it's going to be a lot later, which is obviously in favour for Nullstone. So um, I would like to see maybe some potential early roaming coming out from the Pyromancer and Andromeda, but at the same time, it obviously can backfire if Zinc are prepared for that. So yeah. Um, I'm ready, man. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this game. It's going to be sick. Here we go. Uh, by the way, while we are in that pause, too, just real quickly while we're still developing with this game, uh, the other series is still going on, so it was only a one nothing series lead for Tree. Uh, they are actually in Game 2 right now, oh. but it looks like Tree actually has a pretty solid lead in Game 2. How about that, though? Defiler coming out for oh, yes. his Love. That's... Told you, man. I think that's actually a new hero on the Haunter Season 3, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if we've actually seen her before uh, that game. So I know Defiler, you know, her equivalent actually is pretty popular over in Dota nowadays. So I believe it is. So maybe something to do with that. But give her a shot. Okay, so awesome, she has been played before. Only one hero. is awesome. Now. I love the hero, yeah. We, we've talked about them before. I mean, what she brings, not only with the push and the team fight, but the silence and just how. And the tankiness as well. The new meta shifts come in. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what you're all about, the tankiness. We'll see. Man, if we're all about the tankiness, we need to get some Armadon action. Oh, Armadon. Talk about tankiness, man. That's kind of top of the line right there. But right. it, it just kind of makes sense, though. Like, Zinc got great early mid-game teamfight, but you know, outside of the tankiness, what, what they really have, they have kind of longer cooldowns in that respect. But And they never run any kind of hard carry. Like, when's the last time we've really seen a hard carry from Zinc? Like, oh, yeah, no, they usually don't. Such a long... <laughs> Exactly. Well, that, that, that I mean, goes back so. to Flensmeister, you know, we've talked about that before, how he's not even highest GPM on his team usually, uh, as far as cycles go and everything, so. Not a like, team that runs the hard, hard carry. Maybe, like, the tankiness, sort of tanky sort of metal or tanky sort of style wouldn't work great against maybe, like, BMG or Tree that do have the hard carries quite often than not, but it, it, against Zinc and, like, Dawn that have kind of a similar strategy with Zinc, I mean, why not, man? I'm all about the innovation and the sort of Strategy versus strategy. Yeah, I mean, here we are, cycle five of Haunt Tour season three. You know, we've been in this place now, you know, not a whole lot. Of, obviously, we had a big patch before the season came out, but, you know, since the season has started, we really haven't had anything too big just yet. Now, something is coming, as it's kind of been teased about. So, you know, definitely expect that in the near future. But uh, for now, we're still kind of in that state of, yeah, it's had a little bit of time. Things have kind of got comfortable, still to an extent, in certain places. But at the same time, you know, that kind of does make a point of, all right, well, let's continue to try new things as people are starting to get a little more uh, set in their ways of what they try. And you see Pyromancer, he's actually going to do a creep pull top. So by the way, yeah, they are running the aggressive Gemini Pyromancer. And, I, you know, they've, yeah, they've done this I before. Like it, 
I, I think they they they, they sometimes one. like to run the Gemini long lane. Uh, they did it in game one as well with the Monkey King Glacius versus the Solstice. Right, and it, and it works quite well because obviously, you know, Zinc, they're quite predictable in terms of their lanes. Obviously, they're going to put in the short lane Dr. Repulsor. And Dr. Repulsor is a great 1v1 hero, but I mean, he can easily get picked off in terms of his 1v2. Um, obviously, he has an easier lane because he's in the short lane. Obviously, Tempest is there to back him up if he needs to. But in that respect, obviously, I do like the way you know, they have lane because, you know, Zinc, they can't really punish um, this sort of uh, laning effect from Nelson. And at the same time, it gives Drunken Master a lot an easier lane because obviously he's in the middle lane, so he'll be able to get his XP a lot easier in that respect. So, yeah. good lanes, man, coming from Nelson Gaming. See Fuzzy Sloth here on that Drunken Master going at it against uh, what is the Pebbles Engineer. And right now it hits level three, he does that first. Um, there, not, <laughs> as, I, as I say, Drunken Master, you know, Quincy, of course, being negative as usual. Though. Uh, not not the highest win percentage for them, unfortunately. So, but uh, again, take that as you will. Definitely, uh, they got to be feeling pretty good coming off that game two victory, and with all that momentum as we refer to, cracking in the short lane against Magnus. Both these heroes definitely pretty solid in a true one v one matchup in the melee versus melee. Oh. But at the same time, Kraken's got not only the short lane presence, but he does have Andromeda nearby, of course, who is right now actually stacking or even doing a creep pull at the bottom lane to get that good lane positioning back. So, uh, top lane is Pyromancer. No, he's, he's, he was roaming around a little bit, but now he's coming back up here. So, Flensmeister's had some pretty good time to get in some solid farm. But Gemini, overall, is managing the lead here. Going to go for the Twin Fangs. Done. Does land it. Dragonfire to follow. Now, Pyromancer only level one still. So, no Phoenix Wave. And that's going to be the difference, man. If he had a Phoenix Wave, this is 100% kill. Oh, it still is a kill. Beaver Banger gets credit for it right there in the end. Well played. Coming out, and you know, I gotta say, I honestly wasn't even aware Twin Breath did a dot damage. <laughs> I can't say I was even aware of that. And I double checked, I was like, wait a second, did he die to the dot? I guess he did. Um, but yeah, again, and this is, goes back to obviously the great way and how Nelson Gaming have actually laned it because they can't really rotate your middle lane though, drunken. Barely, oh. barely, barely, <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's not yeah, attack, but, um, interesting, Tempest has gone actually the, uh, the meteor build as well, so. Oh, is he? Yeah. Uh, Slap doing his meteor thing. You know, we've uh, again we've had him on before. He's brought that up. Doesn't he usually like to go blood chalice with this though? I think he's he mentioned does go blood that. Chalice. Yeah, he's not this going one here. Lying to us. Interesting. Changing it up, I guess. Uh, yeah, middle lane though. Drunken Master goes down. Bottom lane, they're really trying to get this Magnus or keep him boxed out. Is is Andromeda, and that's what you would expect, of course. In fact, there's the Aurora and. Scare him off once again. Would it be spicy to see some dust coming out here in the near future? Trying to get that uh, Magnus killed for sure. Four minute rune, top rune being heavily protected by Sync. So is bottom rune. Top tier team, you, you would expect this, doing a great job of rune control. And in yeah, this one, up. one thing, like Zinc always have great rune control. Like, honestly, every single two minutes, like there's two heroes on either side of the lane, and it does make a big difference because the like, particularly obviously we don't have any kind of dust in this game. Like, it's kind of the runes that are the advantage in terms of uh, how to make action happen. And I mean, I think in the last game, I think like they had two invis runes which set up like two kills and. And just having that good room control not only obviously gives you the advantage of maybe setting up kills, but obviously denies it from the enemy team as well. So um, definitely important. Crack in. Oh, nice to man. The catapult right there. Getting some good pressure put in into this bottom lane indeed. And Magnus, so pulling it back. Going to at least probably hit another level there as a result of that. Lane position. Speaking of that, top lane being heavily pushed in as Gemini will try to pick up some farm at the tower. Not the easiest task. Dr. Repulsor doing a single stack pull. Here, no, that is a double stack. Never mind, that is a double stack. No, it's a single. That's, that is a single, yeah. And low. That's right. And low, yeah. That is right. Anyways, um, is Tempest in trouble? Gemini coming over. He's got the twin fangs. And he's going to look to line them up. Oh. He does right there. Twin breath comes out. Parmancer, though. Oh, no. He got stunned by the Minotaur. Minotaur MVP for Sync right here so far. Is that actually going to save him? It is. And actually, now Gemini gets pulled oh, in. Man. Oh, that is hardcore, man. You see, in the meantime, no engineer getting picked off. Maybe? No, Drunken Master didn't push in the best direction, actually. Did not push him into his team. And now Gemini being gone on further. And in comes the Dragonfire stun for Pyromancer. That says, kill me, if anything. They will oblige. That's, oh, the, <laughs> the chalk on the Gemini. It stops the health push, at least. But Pyromancer falls in the end. And that's what matters. But that's got to suck, man. <laughs> that range on the Minotaur stun, too. Oh, just stop. That was just a, that was, it was a massive play from Zlept. Tom Diddle alone. Yeah. With his elementals. Of course. Yeah, 
quite frustrating there, but not the biggest of deals. Obviously, didn't get killed with Tempest and as a result died himself, but still, they're getting good farm on Kraken, and, and once he picks up the portal key, he's going to get it a lot. Oh no, he's not. Gonna, he's going to get it a lot less, a lot later than Pebbles. Actually, he didn't realize how much farm Mickey's got. Actually, jeez. Um, but yeah, so. Kraken, 390 GPM at the moment, it hasn't really been contested because you know, Magnus left the lane in the end and not much you know, Kazu could really do seeing his 1v2 and Magnus isn't the greatest hero in that respect but yeah, once Kraken picks up his portal key, expect some kind of early rotations from him perhaps in the middle lane or, or even the top lane perhaps um, sort of free up farm for, for the Gemini and like I said before the, the game plan here for a Nelson game is trying to delay, delay, delay uh, against sync sort of core items. Once Pellas picks up his portal key and the Astral Labors and Tempest, then expect the snowball coming out from, from Zinc. And Nelson game, they don't have the greatest ways to really address it in terms of the mid early game. So um, Kraken's going to play a key role in this early game. Well, speaking of that, he's you know, applied some good pressure to the bottom tower. You got Magnus back in, though. <clears throat> it will be enough to kind of scare them off as well as well the creep wave being gone for the time being. So. Forced to fall back early. Beaver Banger is 1 0 0, though. 323 gold per minute. He's going to have a war to side to place right there. Kind of doing it in a sneaky spot, not making it so obvious. So well played. And uh, kind of go back to farming in the meantime. You can tell Flint's my is playing pretty, pretty scared almost. Making sure not to get caught out of position. He is level 6, though, so he has the ability to, of course, uh, ludicrous speed if need be. Pyromancer level 4 now. So still no ultimate, but at least able to combo a little bit better. For the time being, but yeah, you look back at Mickey, you talk about it, just man, you look at that farm and just realize how far ahead he is. I mean, being 2 0 0 definitely helps with that. But uh, 466 gold per minute right now for Mickey, no no doubt that that portal key is coming along. But yeah, he yeah, Kraken will actually get it first because he's not going the bottle or the power supply <laughs> at this point, whereas, uh, whereas Pebbles did. So, and Pebbles will still have it shortly after. That's the scary part the fact Ooh. that he went those. Stat items and including the bottle. In fact, a haste are going to be bottled up here. There's no vision at this top side. This is actually really dangerous right now for yeah. Nullstone Gaming. He's going to put a, a wall behind the tower as well, yep, as expected. So they could even dive this tower if they wanted to. Docks level 6 as well, and that's the biggest thing because they have the way to actually initiate onto the Gemini or onto the, the Pyromancer. But Pebbles isn't leaving the, the middle lane yet. It just doesn't, He just wants to secure the farm, wants to get the reliable farm. He's about, you know. 800 gold away from the portal key, so just gonna sit there. Maybe Engineer will, will join them if they need to, and, and there it comes actually. There's the pull in, <gasps> Oh, the Tempest oh, Ultimate! No. Too late right there from Zlapt. Good timing on Gemini's Twin oh. Fangs. I mean, they thought that the pull would be long enough, but not long enough, was it? And you see Pebbles actually come up with a flank right here. Is Mickey gonna commit? Are we gonna see this? Yes, we are. He's gonna go in right there on a power match oh, against the combo. Beautiful, wow. Chuck! He makes the Tempest ultimate make oh, basically God. not matter in the end. <laughs> and he gets the kill. That goes back to the rune control, man. Taking the haste rune. And now here comes the top tower push. Well, the keeper defeating Ogre right there. 2 nothing as we see. Uh, and there's the final matchup. And the scary thing is that Nelson really don't have any way of really sort of defending it. They've got two under level supports that need kind of level 6 before they can really get involved. And obviously, Kraken without a port is kind of worthless in that respect. Uh, and Drunken Master only has his sort of ghost mod, so there's no really weird way they can really almost combat the early aggression from Zinc. Like, Zinc are so strong in the early game, actually, bottom lane. Magnus coming back in, Andromeda in some trouble. Release Kraken, though, does hit. Tempest, in fact, he might be in some trouble, and now he's going to be fine. Andromeda still be chased. How is Andromeda still alive? Finally goes down as the tower is also denied. So good defense put up now by Zinc Esports, and yeah, the, 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 the train is definitely starting to kick in here. Kicking a gear for Sync Esports again. Their their lineup, as it usually is, is more about the get the earlier start, progressing to the mid game, and winning the mid game. And that 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 is going right here, right now for Sync yeah. Esports. And for Nullstone, what they need to do is is, is honestly try and split push as much as possible because they can't take team fights now. Like Astrolab is closing in on Tempest. The portal keys on Pebbles here as well. Um, <clears throat> they need to, sort of, and they're, they're playing against an engineer as well. So there's no way they can take team fights in this game, uh, at least for another like 20, 30 minutes, without a doubt. So to sort of slow this down, they need to find some kind of pickoffs now with the portal key cracking. And every single time Zinc do start pushing and grouping us five, they need to make sure that the lanes push out so much that they can split push and take a trade for for a tier one for a tier one. Because at this time, I mean, the heroes for, for Zinc are just so incredibly strong that it's just absurd. Um, and obviously the underlevel supports are going to be doing absolutely nothing as well. So, um, but it's a lot easier said than done for Nelson Gaming here. Oh, Pebbles! Now he was spotted by that word of sight, kind of trying to be sneaky with that portal key, but 
Obviously, no counter can come out. Top lane, Gemini's in trouble. Portal Key uh, is ready to go for Pebbles, but look at Gemini. He actually falls back. He's oh, middle. not wanting to commit too much. And yeah, back to the middle lane. They take advantage of that. They take out Engineer, actually. They saw Pebbles TPing because of this ward site. And oh, they, they knew that Engineer was going to be alone. So, or alone, excuse me. So, yeah, they're going to push a little bit right here. Yeah, they shouldn't. Zinc will want this to happen. They want, obviously, a 5 on 5 engagement, actually, in Tromada. Maybe. Oh my god, she's, she's still not spot. dead. Okay, yeah, yeah she's, she's going to go. <laughs> she's going to go bye bye. Yeah. Uh, and this is what no stun but they need to play incredibly passive, like incredibly defensive, because one pick off can be the difference between Zinc grouping us five actually top lane. Doc's Pulse are going at it with Gemini, but should be fine in the end. But but yeah, the, the only issue is that no stun gaming they obviously they they still are quite a while, ways away from their core items and even when they get their core items they still can't team fight and and if they're still away from their core items they need obviously the lane and their lane creeps to actually get farmed but every single time they, they you know start farming the lane you know, you have Dr. Repulsor and Pebbles that can easily sort of pick them off if they're not careful. And they don't have the greatest sort of um, jungling team either. So they're just about like 10 minutes before they can really be useful. And, and by that time, I think Zinc might be you know, rolling over him in that time. But we'll have to see, obviously. Yeah. Top lane, you see uh, Zinc speaking of that, trying to find an opportunity up here. You got Gemini, though. He knows that uh, he can't be too safe. Gonna hide off to the side, and actually, Nullstone want, might want to look for initiation themselves, possibly. But Dr. Pulse are just a little too slippery. And for the time being, is gonna be fine. So, a lot of very passive play coming out from Nullstone Gaming here, trying to set up some kills, but clearly not taking effect. I mean, Power Man's are level 6, so he has his burst ready to go. And Dramana, no swap just yet, still, is level 5 only, so. That's kind of crucial as well, getting her level 6 to ASAP. And that's the thing with Andromeda too. I mean, level 1 swap is still obviously great, and that, that'll be great to have, but uh, really at least once level 2, if not as well, especially level 3, is for the range, if anything. I mean, 750 range, again, that's a good amount, but it just it seems like it, it makes so much more of a difference when you get at least oh, level dear. 2. So, uh, yeah, we do see the middle lane, though. Crooked Master going to be in trouble. Burst down onto Engineer in the meantime, but he did his job in a sense. He popped the energy field, gets that job down, pulled it on the Kraken as well for the Tempest Ultimate, and Kraken, he gets pulled. Pulled all over every which way, ends up going down. Andromeda falls, and Sink Esports really yeah. turning on again against Nullstone. This is what I mean. Here. They just simply don't have the heroes to team fight early, yet they are still trying to you know, be involved. Like, you see them TP in. Instead of TP in, they need to sort of push out these lands as much as possible, pressure the tier 2 bottom, pressure the tier 1 mid, because every single time you TP mid, like not only does it like you know, obviously stop them from farming other lanes, it gives Zinc even more farm because there's heroes to kill in that respect. So. They really need to slow down the game, but I think at this time it's almost a little bit too late, but at the same time, so we said that in game two, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but yeah. I, I think it's such a strong early game. I mean, this has it. this definitely has a different feel, though, because if, if anything, at least Oogie was just constantly doing very well, it felt like, for Nullstone Gaming, uh, as far as the carry potential and as far as him, his impact that he could have had. So I, I'm not saying the chance isn't there, because, yeah, exactly. Last game, hell, we're just coming up the last game. We'd be silly to say here this sit here and say this game's over, but it, it does feel at least a little different. Now, there is a chance for a big fight right here. Dr. Pulsar, he's going to be jumped on. Twin Fangs comes in as well. Doctor is still alive. He is going to fall, though, when it's all said and done. In the background, trying to lock down. It looks like Andromeda. She will live, though. Magnus, can he maybe stun back in? No, we can't. Gemini, actually. He's got another Twin Fangs going to be coming up right here, but the Chuck on the trunk, and they fall back. The tower's still up. It's like Nullstone's like not even using their tower right here. They fall back from their tower, actually. And so does Sink in the end, so kind of an awkward uh, finish of the fight there, I guess. But, hey, they, they did get Doctor. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that bad for Nullstone Gaming. And that's only because, obviously, the Temazon was down, but so was the Magmus Eruption. But I guess one for one trade isn't too bad, but you just know that once the elements are up for Zinc, then it's going to be even worse now for, for Nullstone Gaming. Yeah. And Drunken Top. Dead. Again, going to stagger around. He's uh, kind of going in and out of the trees. He knows the support is coming in, and Pebbles... Will help secure that in the long run. He actually had untouchable. Didn't he not have mana for it? Maybe he didn't, I guess. But mm, I think he was dead either way. It doesn't really okay. matter too much. Just making sure. But he yeah, does get picked off, and it's like uh, it's like all oh, that never happened. Sink is now back to the top exactly. lane. They've got ultimates now as well, on yeah, at least Magnus. That's a dead tower right there. So that's going to be even a bigger lead now for Sink uh, coming up here. I mean, Gemini is doing what he can. Beaver Banger only 295 gold per minute, though. 
at this point. Kraken, you know, he's had the portal key for a while, though. 0 one and 2 not the numbers that you're looking for. And actually, it continues. There you see right there, Andromeda does get picked off. So the, 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 the pain train is definitely real from Sync Esports. And again, as, as much as I would like to think Nullstone Gaming has a good fight left in them, it does feel like it's really, really dying out for them. And Sync could be on their way to finishing the job. But it is only 16 minutes in, so let's not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of talk to myself here. <laughs> let's not. Let's not. Say this game's over just yet, but. Crack in. Yeah, he's, he's not in some trouble. He does have a corner key, though. He is, but he's right there. Will he be found? Yes, oh, he yeah. will. Mad Miss knew exactly where he was. And that's a dead Cholo Samyon. Maybe? Yes. Auto attack to finish him. So, you know, things like yeah. that keep happening. That. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Zinc were just so strong in terms of the early game. But, I mean, they did have, I mean, like, Null Center, they put all this kind of farm on the crack in the short lane. Yet, yeah, he, he, not sort of flaming, but he, he didn't do too much with it in that respect. Like, you compare, obviously, the good start from Mickey compared to, say, the good start from Kraken. And, yeah, obviously, you know, there was a bit of different circumstances, but still, you'd expect maybe a couple of ganks. Two, two, it's not the same. Yeah. Nemesis. And the pain continues. Mickey, he's just, he's at that point now as a, as a snowballing pebbles can be. In fact, he might get another kill here on a pyromancer. No, he doesn't have nearly enough mana, actually. So, Or maybe he does. Just a chuck alone could actually do the job. The way he's uh, farmed right now, but you're not going to find that opportunity. In the meantime, the bottom lane goes down. Uh, oh, wow, really? <laughs> if you want to beat Sync, you need to run a jungler, apparently, is what that stat says. <laughs> it's because, obviously, Sync, they always play, like, the early kind of game team fight, and when you run a dual support, you're, you're kind of sacrificing early game team fight. It's almost sort of late game potential, and that's just kind of, like, even worse in that respect. Like, you can't give up that much kind of farm and, and XP to, to Zinc. And in this game, they have, I mean, like, if you look at, like, Pyromancer and, and then Andromeda, like, you've got, obviously... Engineer and Paramount are the same level, but like you got almost like a, what is that, like a five level difference between Tempest and Andromeda, and just like yeah, you pick up the Andromeda to counter the Tempest, but like Tempest offers so much more than just his armor now. Like obviously he's got the the max glacial blast, obviously the pushing potential of the elementals, and he's obviously got the the astrolabe and the ring of sorcery, and this in that respect it's just too much um, that and Andromeda just can't really handle it. With the pods coming out here from Nullstone Gaming, so. But nothing too long. Just figuring something out. But again, the lead now 13,000 goal and 11,000 experience lead. Like uh, like we said, we you know just last game it, it was even higher than that. And Nolson did come back to win it in the end. So, but it's uh, Sync has turned it on. And yeah, the dual, that, that does make a lot of sense though. The dual supports uh, they're being ran here. And yeah, 11 to know against the dual support lineups or, or AKA non jungle lineup. So um, taking advantage of that yet again and more evidence. And that, that's one of those stats though where you know it, it's good. Good that we have, because honestly, if if I was a team watching this right now, and if I ever had the chance to you know play Sinkly like one of these diamond teams, or even know themselves, and maybe go back and watch the cast, I would look at that and be like, mm -hmm. that's Definitely. something to think about. Because I mean that that is a legitimate reason why the stat looks like that. Um, yeah, it's it'd be sick to. Like, I wish I was captain when we had all these stats, because you could really kind of abuse them. Like you really could, like because no, I mean unless you're insanely dedicated like you're not going to really go through every single game in home tour and sort of try and plot your own statistics whereas this you know they're given to you so you can kind of like um you know kind of have some kind of understanding of, of what works with what and what is good against what and obviously what team plays the best with etc and it's obviously so much kind of information that you can really kind of abuse it and exploit it so, you know it's the team's best visibility yeah. and like you said though and teams really should do this, though. I don't know how how much teams actually do it behind the scenes, but middle lane. Yeah, Dr. Fulzer finds a catch chance. Now Kraken comes in. Well, it's Kraken going to be used. Blazing Strike as well. Fun's Meister is going to end up falling. Magnus, the perfect timing with the eruption. And comes into the field. And down goes Kraken and Andromeda. The team are just when you think you have a pick on a hero and such as Dr. Fulzer. Before you know it, the whole team is there to respond and down they go double tap in favor of Flensmeister actually uh, he got the double tap didn't he yeah he did so go figure the guy that you just about killed ends up getting the double tap in the end too so adding insult to injury you can even say but yeah, again that's just a teamwork coming to play we've seen this so many times from sync and uh, clearly the fire is burning right now for sync esports they, they they're coming off that loss in cycle four you know, and, and the they last, made some changes well. and that, yeah, that too, the last game even. And here we go, though, GG well played. It looks like Sink is going to do it and officially advance on to the winner bracket final. So it wasn't easy, 
And it might not actually be over just yet officially. Okay, there you go. It is officially over. So anyways, but it wasn't easy, but uh, no Stone Gaming, they, 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 they do not have enough firepower. And despite forcing a third game, they will drop down to the loosest bracket. So uh, congratulations to Sync Esports especially. Moving on to the winter bracket finals. And again, that means they're going to be playing uh, – they're going to be playing Willow Keeper in the Winter Racket Finals. Definitely a matchup we have had before. And, you know, Willow Keeper, they're coming off a disappointing cycle for with that fifth, sixth place finish. However, they, they had to get through both Night Raid and then Shrek is Love. And, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's almost like odd seeing, like, this matchup, especially knowing that Willow Keeper didn't have to go through BMG to get here because of what happened in the first round. But, hey, that's all, all on Shrek is Love, playing, playing very well themselves. Um, unfortunately, though, not just – so I, th I guess what I'm getting at is I don't know what to expect tomorrow <laughs> from Willow Keeper. Or not tomorrow. I guess that will be next weekend, but in the winter bracket finals uh, from Willow Keeper. Because the last we saw them, it was a pretty disappointing cycle. But clearly, hey, they're in the winter bracket finals again. So I guess we should expect some good stuff out of them. Apparently, they were in Blacksmith and Flint in the uh, Shrek is Love I mean, series. So. From, from what my sources tell me, Brady. <laughs> They've got a lot of things up their sleeve that this is just the, the tip of the iceberg, as they say. Yeah. They've been running a lot of not only different heroes, but a lot of different strategies, according to some of my sources tell me. And I said they're, they're ready to take uh, you know, take number one, from, from what I've heard, anyway. Yeah. So they've got some game breaking strategies, Breaky. So, pretty interesting to see. All right. Well, yeah, that's uh, obviously that, that will not be until next weekend for the Winter Bracket Finals. Uh, I am updating the brackets right now, but again, I'll, I'll just show you what we got before it's finished updating, but get an idea of who's where. So uh, these are how things are going to be advancing on tomorrow. As always, we're going to be coming back and casting the loser's bracket round one, followed by the second round of the loser's bracket. So, uh, yeah, some pretty crazy series we have there to choose from initially, including the number one and three teams from last cycle are now the first round of the loser's bracket. That, of course, being Bad Monkey Gaming versus Night Raid. And then Dawn versus Rexar. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know which one of those we're going to cast, but no doubt, I'm very intrigued to see how both of those play out. And not only which teams stay alive, but which teams ultimately are going to be dropped down to Gold Division uh, in what, 